there you go, we're all together. So, um, yes, with, um, it's interesting in these is times of lockdown or semi-lockdown, of course, I think lockdown, I think none of us in lockdown, because you ask the women and, well, the blokes as well, but the people in prison, um, they're in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> and they're a bit in lockdown in lockdown as well so it's it's um in these times like you know the prison project's been going now um 26 years liberation prison project but in australia we started in australia actually i think it started with a previous nun here 2003 um and um anyway so what's been interesting is that uh because we weren't getting much information um, from prisons via the news, particularly early on, and also we were be giving, um, being given a lot of practices to do, we actually sent out all the practices that the Dalai Lama and Lama Zopra Rinpoche, that we'd been advised um, to the prisoners and asked them to write back and share their experience of um, lockdown so we could get some news. Of course, since then, we have had a little bit of news. Um, but what happened was um, fairly early on in March, maybe mid-March or something, we had, um, first of all, they said no more visits to prisons. Um, and then they undid that. So people are able to visit one-on-one -on -one um, I'm talking about we have um, like prison chaplains. However, the prison chaplains for Liberation Prison Project are all in a rather vulnerable age group. Or the, um, so the women visiting, uh, the three that I'm thinking of um, visiting in Australia. And so they, um, well, one of them I said, please don't go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> and the other two are not going. But because we're mainly our main focus anyway is writing we've been able to 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 keep maintain that that contact um and because at least in new south wales which is where we're getting most feedback from in australia was that um because you know we heard in the news early on how this is a vulnerable group of people in prison they've actually uh implemented very strong measures in the prisons and there hasn't been one case yet um, Queensland early on we had one uh, officer, um, prison officer, um, who, who um, was in, infected with the virus, um, but that's, it's been in Australia um, quite um, well contained in the prison sector, which is no small feat if anyone's ever visited a prison, mm -hmm. um, because social distancing, well forget that, you know, is near on impossible when you're sharing a little, you know, small room together. Anyway, that's, of course, it's meant that, pe that people in prison haven't been able to get together in groups. So their Dharma groups and, and so forth haven't been able to, to meet. Um, and there's a lot less exercise going on. So it was, it, there are challenging times. Uh, but my thoughts was that these people know how to do isolation they know how to do lockdown and it makes your heart appreciate just how difficult the circumstances can be they can be quite difficult but to make the you know making the most of it you know we constantly get the thing of when people have all so many rights stripped away from them and not just rights sometimes it's even like your identity um you know you're called by a number and and so forth and it uh, it becomes a in, uh, depersonalized environment a little bit um, and then of course you know you're taken away from your family your job um, all those things that create the status for how you identify yourself and so people in prison have had to adjust to that um, from the day they go into prison without any preparation whatsoever, really, mostly without any preparation whatsoever. So, and, um, and just, you know, where they have been able to um, be a great benefit, where we've been able to great benefit is just say, okay, this is retreat time. This is practice time. This is study time. This is this opportunity to really 
you know, from their side, they want to turn their lives around. They say, hey, look, this is my wake up call, I want to turn my life around. Um, and the women have a very, you know, more, more than the men have a very, a very good um, social support uh, network. But I was thinking about some of the women I was visiting, um, or actually another chaplain was visiting regularly, but visited in um, some of the prisons in Sydney who, uh, all different countries, all different language groups, um, and yet where there were two of them who spoke Chinese or Hungarian or whatever, they were able to support each other. And it was so wonderful to see in the, in the Dharma group that, you know, the supports, of course, you know, we reach out for those supports where we can, even despite the obstacles in that sort of environment. So it's very, I find it very inspiring, um, the determination uh, to practice, to, to study, to, and we just before the lockdown, we got a lovely letter from these women, um, you know, just saying, we're missing you and, you know, we're all doing fine and so forth. And uh, uh, quite a few of those have now been released, those women. There was, was that, um, well, there was the implementation of let's release those who uh, are almost at the end of their sentence or have um, uh, non-violent charges against them, you know, who are not at risk to society. Um, and that didn't really get implemented straight away, but nonetheless, um, quite a, a few quite a few of those have, have now been released. So that's really good to see. But then of course there's a support post-release as well, which in normal times can be quite traumatic, let alone once you put um, isolation of COVID in, into the mix and having community supports and so forth. So, you know, mostly these women have um, no money, um, may or may be not be estranged from their family or going back into a violent relationship, which we've been hearing about um, the escalation in domestic violence. So I think these are issues we need to be constantly vigilant about and seeing. I know for myself, I sort of feel quite powerless in that domain. Um, but I think, you know, we have to uh, support all of those um, uh, organisations that are uh, campaigning for more support for uh, for um, victims of domestic violence and so forth. I was looking for the you know t appropriate PC term, but I couldn't remember what it was. Anyway, um, but we know what we're talking about there, and this is something that is um, common in society. And uh, so. It's been wonderful to be able to support from the outside. The main thing is to, is to let them know we're here to support you. We're here to connect with you and want to receive those connections from you um, because we'd like their stories to then inspire others. Um, and they do inspire others. They certainly inspire everyone involved in the project. You sort of think, well, here am I well, at Chen Rezig Institute in this beautiful retreat environment. And even in lockdown, we have 165 acres. I mean, it's, we've got our own exercise program just by going for a walk up and down the steps here. If anyone's been here, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, it's all sort of relative. But I did want to talk a little bit about that as well, that um, here at Chen Rezig Institute, uh, some of our nuns so have taken the opportunity to, to go into more strict retreat while we've got the doors closed and uh, to the public. Uh, we've still been able to, as a community, because we are one household, we're a household of 40 residents here, <laughs> but defined by Queensland government as a household. So we've been able to continue to get together with appropriate compassionate distancing. Uh, and we've been doing that for two and a half months now to do our practices. So daily practice, um, which we do uh, morning and evening. And then also to have teachings and so forth online. 
and we've had a, you know a lot more people participating in that but i'm building up to the big joyous occasion we had last saturday and i just think this is inspiring what you can do in lockdown we had an ordination for new nuns that's like you know we had nine resident nuns here and a couple are off site three i think off site oh um so now we've got four more with like another quarter of our population just like that in lockdown. How amazing is that? Well, we were having a big, I don't know if we can say party, but um, celebration last weekend um, of that, that, um, you know, even in these difficult times, and actually I was, I was talking to our baby nuns, <laughs> one week old baby nuns, uh, a little bit earlier, a couple of them saying, well, actually it's quite nice that we're not open to the public because we're gradually adjusting um, to being a nun, even though a few of them had been living here pre-ordination, which has, you know, facilitated them able to take ordination. But what was wonderful for us here was that Saturday coincided with the day that um, in Queensland, we were able to travel 150 kilometres radius from your home, which meant our dear sister of uh, nun friends, four of them came up from Brisbane to join in, to be part of this community, you know, celebration of such significance for us um, of having, you know, these four new nuns. So it was just so joyous because it's like there was no impediment, you know, because we're allowed to have 10 people on the property and kept a note of how many were coming in and, and so forth. So I think, you know, taking the opportunity, just like the women do in prison, to be able to take the opportunity to embrace the Dharma in difficult times. I mean, what alternative do we have? Um, and to be, and feeling that those of us who are engaging in the Dharma have that gift that a lot of people, other people don't have to be able to negotiate our way through difficult times, challenging times. So this has been a real um, great opportunity for re reflection, internal reflection, and um, to really focus on our practice. And um, not that it's been, you know, not that it's been dreamlike. <laughs> well, maybe it has been dreamlike, but not, maybe it's been, yeah, anyway. Uh, it's been quieter and we've seen ourselves become more of a monastic community and I have to say what has contributed to that is also um, you know the number of students thank you so very much who just um, offer food to us and in our tradition a bit different in other traditions this is new in the West right this is not uh, culture of giving in in that way like directly you know we've had people support um, supporting uh, our sangha with the, when we had uh, a functioning cafe which has been closed now for um, was it 10 weeks um, so we haven't had that and our students have just jumped in and you know we meet them down at the Lion Gate, you know, way out on the road, do an exchange in the cars. Actually, now it's all coming online. We're getting, now we can get online as well. But, you know, it's just been wonderful to, for us to be able to reflect, this is what it is to live in a monastic environment, you know, as the Buddha intended. So without the support of, of thank you, because I know at least one of you is here listening, um, to be able to, you know, provide that support um, for our necessities, you know, of life. Uh, so we can continue to practice and to teach and to share the Dharma. And I know everyone's missing coming here. Um, at least I hear that. And uh, we hope to soon be able to invite people physically in. As I said, we can invite 10 people, but I was saying this morning, well, that's a bit tricky. We say, you 10, and then, sorry, doors closed. It sort of feels a bit weird to do that. <laughs> so um, anyway, we're all in a new normal, or actually we were saying uh, this morning that maybe it's not gonna be a new normal, 
because we don't think we've had this new normal long enough for it to become normal. <laughs> because when you, as soon as they say you can go to the shopping centre or the beach, look what's happened, right? All our, you know, sort of social distancing goes out the window. So um, for us here, it's been a huge, precious opportunity. Of course, we know that we um, will be opening our doors at some point in time when our our Premier deems that and at some future point we'll be opening our borders. We think, we're not sure, <laughs> you know, it keeps, keeps being extended beyond. Um, but keeping the, the networks alive and keeping our support, just like we're keeping our support going for those in the prison setting, keeping our support as a Sangha member for our Sangha sisters and those, you know, outlying ones of our community. They're the Brisbane ones, they're outliers. <laughs> it's part of our community, you know. And uh, to be able to support each other is, is, is so, so important, as maybe Lamo might be thinking, yes, there are my, um, on my own, maybe. Are you? Anyway, so uh, having been at Vajrayana Institute for, um, mm, uh, mm, I think, Mm, 12 years oh. as um, you know mostly mostly solo nun others coming and going I know what it is to not have that support so it's wonderful to be actually I've been here now like yesterday two day, uh, two years two years it's been wow um, and uh, to have that capacity to participate in a monastic community which it certainly in our tradition there aren't so many of those opportunities of those nunneries so in um, in Australia for sure you know we've got a fledgling one in Bendigo very fledgling and until our borders open up we won't be welcoming from overseas the fortunate thing is that one of the nuns here was going to be leaving us and going to Dharamsala and she's a foreign national and her visa ran out in April and uh, so she's stuck here so we are so delighted <laughs> and she's adjusted as well. No, she's very happy to be here. Um, and, you know, on a whatever bridging or, you know, there's those special, special case for foreign nationals. So she's, she's able to stay and uh, participate in this community and, and build up as a, as a nun in her first, um, it's over a year now. Oh, no, maybe still in her first year. Actually, maybe still in her first year. Yes, I think. Yeah, a couple more months. A uh, couple more weeks. So um, I think I'll stop there. I think I've talked for way long enough. And uh, thank you very much. And um, then we can, can I just ask ask a question? Can you hear me? Sure. Um, you know, looking back at or looking at those women in prison, for yes. how many is is it actually a it, it could become a beneficial experience rather than just a coping experience? If it, you know it's that. for I would say well for all of those that connect with us, it's a beneficial experience because they see that as an opportunity, not you know to really you see the transformation happen. You know, we hear in the teachings about you know, working on your mind and transforming and so forth, you see it happen because a prison is a very intense environment. So when people grab hold of something, they grab hold intensely. And also all the things that distract you away, they don't, can't go to the beach, they can't go to the shopping centre, they can't do a whole bunch of stuff. So you're really focused. And so having the support, it's, it's, it's remarkable to see even people have literacy issues and so forth, their literacy improves because they have to write a letter. And so sometimes they get their friends to write the letter and sometimes they have to get their friend to translate the letter. But even on that level, you know, you see that benefit. And then by particularly, regardless, and, you know, un unfortunately in, in many ways, we can only... Um, offer our services to people whose name is written down as Buddhist. You know, this is a criteria of the prisons. Um, in some countries, we've been able to get in through the education and offer other programs that you can 
reach a bigger audience. But just the meditation, you know, to deal with the stress of living in a prison is palpable. The, the transformation, in fact, the prison officers, you know, say, oh, you know, we love it when you come in here. Everyone gets peaceful, quiet. They watch their breath. Makes my job easy. And the environment changes and they want to help other people. So we're getting that anecdotally from education officers, from psychologists, from um, uh, the prison uh, cust um, custodial staff, admin, everybody, you know, that it's, it's very welcoming, um, chaplains and so forth. They're so, so supportive of any, uh, any engagement in transformation or attempt at that. And it's, it, they grab hold because it's beneficial. It's beneficial for just getting through the day, you know, day to day. And you see the results afterwards that, like one of, um, I think, Tenzin, uh, someone Tenzin Palma, she went into um, Long Bay Prison, well, quite some years ago now, with Venable Aileen, I think, you know. And, uh, you know, we also had um, Kandrala, who's the, she doesn't like to be called Oracle, but His Holiness the Dalai Lama has recognised her as one of his oracles. And she lives in the compound with his, you know, the property. Um, his Holiness has given her a house. And when she went into um, a couple of prisons here, uh, it was remarkable. I mean, everyone in the prison, you know, all the top staff were there and it was just such powerful energy. And, you know, one of the inmates took uh, refuge with her, said, you know, saw her picture in the Mandala magazine and said, that's who I want to take refuge with. I mean, we didn't even know she was coming to Australia at that point and then took refuge and uh, such powerful, powerful uh, transformation that happens in connections that happen and actually even connecting with the Dharma, not in their wildest dreams before they got into prison would they have thought that even though it might say Buddhist, you know, oh, yes, my family was Buddhist, but I don't actually know anything about Buddhism, you know, or newly coming to it because they bring each other along. And so this is what, from day one of my involvement, which was way back in 2006, seeing that determination, that practice, that transformation happening continues to inspire me as a practitioner, as a very poor practitioner, very lazy one. So to be inspired by what they're doing in such difficult circumstances is not just transformative for them, it's transformative for everyone who engages with them. Thank you, Venerable Choki. It sounds amazing. I don't think there's any other questions. Uh, I'll just look in the gallery. Does anyone else want to ask a question? Okay. Um, Venerable Choki, thank you. We really appreciate your time. And at Sakadita Australia, we are hoping to have that conference. When yes. we can come up, we'd love to come up. Um, there's a full program organised. And we're thinking maybe, uh, Sharon will confirm, March, April this next year may be a possibility. So okay. let's so, create the causes for it to, yes. you know. So um, all the members listening, that is a possibility for next so year. So Sharon, can you have a chat to Anastasia Palaszczuk and just <laughs> Get her to open up. <laughs> Get her to open up. <laughs> Only in March. Yeah, okay. No, we need before then to make the flights, right? <laughs> yes. And we're joking. Thank you so much. That was illuminating. Okay. So, thank um, you. Now, do you want me to stay online for a little while? I've got to go in about... We'd, we'd love you to stay as long as you can. Okay. Okay, I'll just... Mute. We understand you have other commitments. So... <laughs>